Okay, this is a special video just about voice onset time, which is a pretty fundamental thing to know about speech acoustics, even if you're not going to memorize all the other consonant properties. So what we're talking about is the time elapsed between the consonant burst and the voicing onset. This is actually what we call the voice onset time. So we're looking at this stretch of the waveform right here. And just as a reminder, the periodicity is where we see those vertical marks that corresponds to the vowel right there. So we're normally looking at this as we see in the waveform because we're thinking about the time and the waveform shows us the exact information in the time domain. We can also see it in the spectrogram because voicing onset is the onset of low frequency energy. So just as we have this part, this upper blue rectangle up here corresponding to the aperiodic point in the waveform, we also have this blue mark down here corresponding to where we have a lack of low frequency energy in the spectrogram. And the reason we know this is low frequency energy is because the rate of vibration of the vocal cords is in the low hundreds. So when we're visualizing that on a spectrogram that goes, say, between 0 and 5,000, we know it's going to be at the very lower point on the graph. So let's compare voice onset times between two different sounds. Up at the top, we have a voiceless stop sound like t in a word like time. And so we see the stop release marked in the red arrow there, and then the onset of the voicing for the vowel marked in the purple arrows. So again, we're thinking about the time elapsed between the red arrow and the purple arrow. And that measurement itself will distinguish between voiced and voiceless stops. So on the top, if that word is time, the bottom would be a word like dime. And these numbers that we're measuring, the amount of time typically ranges in the tens of milliseconds. So let's see what this looks like. For example, for a sound that has 10 milliseconds voice onset time, this would be one of our voiced stop sounds like b, d, or g. So we can see this in the waveform. We can see it on the spectrogram as well. And so what we want to think about is that little burst moving backwards into the vowel. So the burst stays where it is, but we're thinking about taking periodicity away from the vowel so we can see it in the waveform, and we can also see it in the spectrogram. So again, this sound has 10 milliseconds voice onset time, and what we want to do is cycle through and lengthen this voice onset time just to compare what the sounds look like. So we can move on to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70 milliseconds voice onset time. So notice what happened was our consonant bursts stayed at the same spot, but what we're doing is we're taking that periodicity away from the vowel, rendering this part aperiodic and lengthening the time elapsed between the burst and the onset of the periodic portion for the vowel. So comparing side by side, we have the short voice, on, voice onset time. So comparing side by side, we have the short voice onset time over on the left, 10 milliseconds, this would be like a b, d, or g. And over on the right, we have a long voice onset time of 70 milliseconds, like a p, t, or k. So as you can see, we're measuring in the time domain, and we think of this usually as a timing cue. But for those of us who have worked in speech acoustics for a while, we know that there are other acoustic cues as well. There are changes in F0, or pitch, and there are changes in the first formant contour. And so although this is outside the scope of an introductory class on speech science, it is good to know that what we're seeing when we measure voice onset time isn't the whole picture, but we do think that it's the primary factor when explaining consonant voicing for stops. So this shows data collected by Eleanor Shadroff showing the distributions of voice onset time values for different sounds in English. So for up here, we have our voiced sounds, b, d, and g, and we can see that for the most part, the voice onset times range close to zero or in the low numbers there. They're a little bit different across those categories in ways that extend beyond the scope of what we'll talk about here. The main thing we want to look at is the difference between the top panel and the bottom panel, where the voice onset times are primarily between 40 and 75 milliseconds. So one thing that you'll notice in this graph and in graphs of other speech acoustic features is that 30 milliseconds seems to be a special boundary. Voice onset times tend to be either below 30 milliseconds for voiced sounds or above 30 milliseconds for voiceless sounds. Another part that's left out of this graph is that some languages and individuals demonstrate VOT values in the negative numbers, 
So we'll talk about that a little bit later, but this is just to make sure that you know when you're looking at a plot like this, it's leaving out some of the productions by some individuals. So let's take a closer look at the, some of those timing landmarks to know where those data came from. So up top we have the word tier, and in these boxes down here we've zoomed in to the region right around that period of aspiration. So we can see the aspiration onset, or the burst onset, is marked with that red vertical line, and then over here the onset of periodicity mark is marked with another line. For its cognate pair, deer, what we're doing is just marking the onset of periodicity, and then that little blip that comes before it is what we call the burst. So here are some images of voiceless stop sounds, which we also call aspirated. So depending on the level of detail of your phonetic study, you might just call these aspirated sounds. And there are these counterparts with voicing. So I'll toggle back and forth just so you can see the differences here. We have a long voice onset time here and a short voice onset time here. So let's compare them vertically just so we can make sure we know what we're looking at. Circled in red is the burst or aspiration part. So we can see up top that the aspiration has a longer duration. So this longer voice onset time is what makes it voiceless. Down on the bottom, we see much shorter periods of this, and essentially what we're seeing is that the periodicity in the vowel begins pretty much right away. We want to make sure that that's the part of the graph we're looking at, and not, for example, the loud part which just corresponds to the vowel. What, we're, what we want to think about is when does the vowel begin relative to the onset of the whole utterance not just a property of the vowel itself. Now I mentioned pre-voicing before and now we can take a look at that. So pre-voicing you can kind of consider as a kind of super voicing. So not only does the voicing begin very close to the consonant burst, it actually begins before the consonant burst. So what we can see in this top panel here is this low frequency energy circled in the lower part of the spectrogram beginning even before the vowel begins. So this would sound like B, or D, or G. So up at the top we have B, D, G, and down at the bottom we have B, D, G. So in English, we don't really make a distinction between B and B. These are just a choice that an individual can make, and sometimes it's due to dialect differences and things like that, just idiosyncrasies. Um, but it's in some languages, it actually makes a difference between the meanings of words. So to recap what we've talked about today, voice onset time is the time elapsed between the burst or the release of the consonant and the onset of periodicity. It indicates stop consonant voicing, with voiced stop sounds having a short VOT close to zero milliseconds, or at least below 30, and voiceless consonants having a longer VOT closer to 60 to 70 milliseconds. We can also observe pre-voicing, which would also indicate a voiced consonant, but it's not universally used, especially in English. So your goal for this class is to be able to recognize VOT on a waveform and know what that feature corresponds to.